Hi listeners, I wanted to share with you something that is going on and this is really pertinent right now. I am doing this advertisement as part of a charitable initiative in partnership with Ballot Ready and I'm not getting any um, money with this. This is an unpaid opportunity, but I really wanted to share with you. The goal of this initiative is to increase voter education and encourage you guys to get the vote out during the 2020 general election this November. Ballot Ready is a nonpartisan voter guide to every race and referendum. Most voters, you guys, will enter the booth knowing who you want to vote for president or governor or senator, but you're not prepared for everything else. But every position on the ballot matters. Judges, school boards, water commissioners, and city councils make the decisions that affect our everyday lives. A voter who goes to BallotReady.org can enter their address to see their entire ballot, and from there they can compare candidates based on stances, on issues, biography, or endorsements. Once they've made a decision, they can save their choices and use that when you go to the polls to vote. Voters can also use a requ um, also request a ballot to vote by mail and find their polling place and make a plan to vote. I hope that you'll take advantage of this. I know I'm going to because this and every opportunity to vote is the way that we continue to make sure that our voices are heard and that we are well represented. Welcome. You're listening to the Bulldog Educator Podcast, hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. Thank you so much for listening. Music created for the Bulldog Educator is by David Galvez. Podcast platform is through anchor.fm. Welcome to another episode of the Bulldog Educator Podcast. I'm just so excited. This is episode nine, and I can't believe I have made it to episode nine. Um, it has been a, a busy couple of weeks. Those of you that are educators that listen along with me, I'm sure you're nodding your head right now. Um, and when I say busy, that really is an, adic an adequate word to describe what has been going on since basically the first part of August until now. And so this particular podcast is just me. Um, just wanting to reach out to all of my educators out there, those professional educators that are out there doing the work. Um, um, and I just want to let you know that this podcast is really to speak to you and let you know that your voice matters. Recently, I was scrolling through uh, Twitter, probably as an attempt to escape from the realities of what's going on right now. And I came across a post from Beth Hill or Bethany Hill. She's part of the hashtag Joyful Leaders. And if you want to follow her, her handle is at Beth Hill 2829. Um, but she said on Twitter, you can tell a teacher to take the weekend off to push school to the side, to avoid email and to avoid 12 to 14 hour days. But they will tell you most of the time being highly effective in their roles requires them to use their personal time. Teachers need us to know that. Man, is that so true? We need people to know that we are giving of our time, taking away from our families, taking away from our own personal needs, uh, canceling doctor's appointments, um, and sometimes uh, forgetting to eat because we're just so busy or we go to eat and realize, oh, we haven't been to the grocery store lately and we're out of food. I've heard a lot of posts or I've seen a lot of posts lately from teachers and I've heard the weariness. I've felt the hot tears of frustration and sadness from you guys. And this, this thing face-to-face -face teachers are having to do with either online teaching or doing both without um, anything given to them in the way of a well-laid-out course or curriculum isn't how it should be. Um, and I speak from this because I was a face-to-face -face teacher and now I'm the director of curriculum instruction for an online learning program. And the first thing I kind of want to let you guys know is that you cannot design online learning out in front of the students just staying a few days ahead of them. It honestly isn't sustainable for you guys. And so this weariness that you're feeling, this overwhelming tiredness, this feeling of I am running a marathon and I don't have the energy or the depth to finish this marathon. It it's not sustainable for you, nor is it really realistic to expect you to be doing this. Most of you, I would encourage and probably are sharing and collaborating um, just by that and, and the sheer will of doing it. If you're doing this all alone, I highly encourage you to possibly coordinate or connect with teachers either on Facebook or Twitter and get some, some shared content or ideas from them so that you are not creating everything. 
in an online learning um, situation, the curriculum course, um, like in the organization that I'm in, is already built for the teachers. The teacher then facilitates the learning and supports through short live Zoom sessions, microtopic videos to enhance the supplement of the program of study or course and content. And when it's built like that, where it's already ready, instead of having to build out in front of the students, you're able to focus on feedback and connecting with the learner. And I think that's where the weariness comes in. You guys are so busy trying to create the content and give the instruction either face-to-face, -face, blended learning, or online learning, or a little bit of both. And there's no room for you to be able to focus on the feedback and connecting with the student. So I highly encourage you to reach out to your administrators, your instructional leaders, and ask for creative content. Or if you've got a team of teachers that you're working with, divide and conquer the asynchronous content. Share your Zoom sessions um, so that maybe you can be creating content while somebody else is managing the Zooms and live sessions. But find ways to share the load. Um, do, don't think that you have to do it all on your own. The other part I want to talk to you about is the connection, the content, and the creation. One of the things that I saw, one of the educators I highly respect from Joy Kerr is that she said, in all of this, I'm just going to focus on the connection. I'm going to capture students and notice when and who thrives in an online environment. I'm not saying ignore the content, but I am saying connection first. And, you know, if content comes second, it comes second, but connect with those students. And when you can connect and capture and engage those students, then the learning will become something that you can share together. I mean, the learning doesn't have to be all on you. Uh, lean into your students and learn together. I will say that um, when you're focusing content, really whittle down to the essentials. Find ways for students to learn where it isn't solely reliant on the live sessions or the content you put in the course. Give them the opportunity to seek and find things and bring them back to share with uh, the learners. Um, one of the things you can do is um, ensure the accessibility and they imp implement the tenets of UDL by using ideas of the multiple means of engagement. Find ways to engage the students. Capture their attention in ways that, hey, I know you're interested in um, baseball and in what we're doing right now in um, social studies. Find out what kind of sport was involved during this time and how do people entertain themselves? Um, or if you're studying um, uh, issues of race, how um, how was baseball impacted um, by uh, racial segregation um, early in uh, the inception of the sport of baseball, for example? Also, look for ways um, to, to provide multiple means of representation. Uh, just talking in a lecture style or having everything just text in the court, um, the online course, that can really um, be dis, uh, dis, dismaying to those students. But it also can create barriers for students that maybe struggle with either um, um, auditory listening or they struggle with reading text. Um, so provide a multiple ways to present the content, um, provide text, provide video, um, and provide transcript that they can read what was in the video um, and uh, provide opportunities for them to go and learn to extend their learning that they can bring back without you having to provide all of the learning. And then multiple lanes of action and expression. And when they're engaged and there's multiple ways of representation and then they're seeking out information, that action and expression, th what they bring back can be so important. Uh, this is where you can use some rubrics to help uh, guide the learning if you need to assess um, things beyond just, you know, those formative informal assessments um, that you're just checking where the students are, but you need to uh, um, get a grade. Uh, look for ways to allow for those multiple means of action and expression that you are targeting, you know, guys, this is what I need to know that you've learned. This is the mastery that I need to see through those learning goals. And then they find ways to express that. Um, I really encourage you to do less, focus on less, have really precise learning goals that have flexible verbs um, and multiple means for how they can express that they have um, reached that learning goal. And I know that might seem hard, but in some ways you're, you're going to stretch the uh, reach that you have 
by doing less of everything and uh, um, and m- diving deep into your essentials and get more out of that with just a few things. Um, students don't have to all the time be creating either, um, but they can have moments that arise where they seize it, where um, something may come to them. So, you know, maybe keep it open-ended where sometimes it's just a response or a quick quiz, um, but sometimes give them the opportunity or a choice board where they go create content based on the learning because um, they have this creative outlet that they want to share. And uh, in this way, uh, allowing it to seize the moment as it arises, their passion will be ignited. And honestly, man, do we get excited when our kids surprise us with something they created? Absolutely. It, and then it ignites us too. And it gives us back sense, maybe some of that energy that we're drained from right now. The other thing I want to let you guys know is that online teaching is exactly that, a fully dedicated role and responsibility. And if you've been asked to do both, you are essentially being asked to do two jobs at the same time. A face-to-face teacher, there are certain art, there's a certain art and science to how that is done. And then in online teaching, it's a different kind of art and science to get that done as well. And so if you're trying to do both of them simultaneously, it is no wonder you're feeling exhausted and weary. So I want to let you know that's a natural feeling for you to have. And um, you're not alone in feeling that this is this is more than I can possibly do because you're essentially ask, being trying to be two people at one time doing two entirely different jobs um, because they do operate from different functionalities. And so you're right to feel like it's not doable. You're right to feel like you can't do either well, whether it be face to face and online. And you're right to feel like you've been overextended. And honestly, I don't know how to fix that when you've been asked to do both um, or have really any advice. However, I do know that even when you're split between that online and face to face, you are the lifeline of learning for those students. And um Even if you don't feel that you're doing your very best, you're you're giving them more than than they possibly would have without you. And so um, just remember that um, we hold ourselves to extremely high standards and um, that understanding and grace you give to your learners. um, Maybe we need to turn that back around for ourselves and give ourselves that grace and understanding. I also just want to encourage you to remain hopeful. Stay with it and know that I see you. I see the weariness. I see um, just, you know, the point of just exhaustion that you are. And many of us see you and are praying for you. As Amy Fast, um, an EDD said um, on Twitter, hope isn't a feeling. It's a behavioral process, a habit of mind born from overcoming adversity. The confidence that we have some influence over our own future. Hope doesn't exist without struggle, and struggle, of course, needs hope to not become suffering. So I encourage you, we must lean into both. I know you are struggling. I know you can overcome this adversity. So hold fast to the hope and lean into it all. I see your heart. I hear the weariness. I share your tears. But most of all, though, I hold on to the hope and pray that you hold on to the hope as well because you matter. Thank you for listening to the Bulldog Educator podcast. Um, And um, please, please continue to listen. And I appreciate all my listeners out there. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Bulldog Educator hosted by yours truly, Kirsten Wilson. You can find the Bulldog Educator on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram using the handle at the Bulldog EDU. That's at the Bulldog EDU. You can also find us and content related to education and this podcast on our blog at thebulldogedu.org.